Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Bissell. We are working on lesson 4-2 today. Estimate the product of a decimal and a whole number. We are going to be working on page 172 of our volume 1 textbook if you need to get yourself there. Our essential question that is going to guide us through our lesson is what are some ways to estimate products with decimals? And just like with whole numbers, we are going to look at two ways that we have already studied. One way is we're going to use rounding. The second way we're going to use compatible numbers. All right, so let's look at the situation. A wedding planner needs to buy 16 pounds of sliced cheddar cheese. About how much will the cheese cost? So we need 16 pounds. My picture shows me that the unit price per pound is $2.15. Our fifth grade helper helps us think through this. She says that you can use different strategies to estimate a product and that the words how much, about how much mean that we only need an estimate. We know that we're multiplying because we're going to need to make 16 groups of $2.15. So let's look at the rounding. Just like with whole numbers, we're going to round one of our factors to the nearest whole number. I'm going to use 16 and 16 rounds to 20. And I'm going to round the second factor to the nearest whole number and $2.15 rounds to the nearest whole dollar to two. So if we multiply two times 20, we get an estimate of the cheese costing about $40. Another way is to use those compatible numbers. So we could think about some numbers that we know that are even closer than the rounded numbers. So some of you are really good at counting by 15s. So if you're good at counting by 15 mentally, then why don't you make 16, 15? That keeps your estimated um, factor a lot closer to the actual factor. And then $2.15, we're going to round it to $2 and use the, the compatible numbers, $2 times 15. And 2 times 15 is 30. So we get $2 times 15 equals $30. So with using compatible numbers, the estimate will be $30. Now thinking about which one will be closest to the actual value, remember the one closest to the actual product is going to be the method in which your factors are as close to the original factors as possible. So in this case, your compatible numbers are going to give you a closer estimate. All right, boys and girls, let's just go straight to page 173. And let's look at another example at the top of the page. Manual walks a total of 75 hundredths of a mile to and from school each day. If there have been 105 school days so far this year, about how many miles has he walked in all? So here we go. We could take 105 and multiply it times 75 hundreds because we're making 105 groups of 75 hundreds. So that's multiplication. Using rounding, we're going to leave 105 this whole number. We're going to round the decimal to the nearest whole number. One times 105 is 105. So the estimate is 105 miles. Now, using compatible numbers, you know, 100s are easier to count by in your head than 105. So if you have 100 here for this factor and you round this factor to the nearest um, tenth, 8 tenths times 100 give you 80. And we learned how to multiply yesterday. We would have move this decimal two places to the right to multiply by a power of 10. 10 to the second power means that in eight tenths, we would move that decimal two places to the right. So the little girl's even reminding you, be sure to place the decimal point correctly. All right. Both methods provide reasonable estimates of how far manual has walked. However, the one that has the factors closest to the original will be the closest. All right, so let's take a look at some of the practice problems under the guided practice. Let's look at number one. 
there are about 20 school days in a month. About how many miles do, does manual walk each month? All right, write an equation to show your work. So there are about 20 days in a month. All right, manual walks 75 hundredths of a mile to and from school. So I'm thinking the, the, the method of estimation I'm going to use here is I'm going to multiply 20 times 1. I'm going to round this decimal to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to get an, an estimate of about 20 miles. Okay, that is not the absolute correct way or the only way to estimate this problem. Remember, our estimates are just an about answer that we're going to use so that when we actually multiply, we can see if our product is reasonable. So when we actually learn how to multiply a whole number in a decimal, we will see if our product is close to 20. If it's close to 20, our answer is reasonable. All right. Um, let's just jump over to three through eight and let's estimate the products. We can use rounding or we can use compatible numbers. All right. I'm looking at number three and I am thinking that I could round, use rounding, 87 hundredths easily rounds to the nearest whole number one. And if I use one, I know I can multiply and get 112 as my estimate. Okay. Number four, I have 104 times 33. So just to make my life easier, I'm going to use some rounding. 104, I'm going to make 100. All right, 33 easily rounds to 30. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave it 33 hundredths because I'm going to use the strategy we learned yesterday, which is multiplying by powers of 10. So very simply, we're multiplying by 100, which is 10 to the second power. So all I need to do here, whoops, all I need to do here is move the decimal point two places to the right to get a higher estimate. So when I do that, I move the decimal, I mean, to get the the correct product. When I move it two places to the right, I get an estimate of 33. All right, let's take a look at number five. Nine and two tenths. I'm going to round that to nine, the nearest whole number. I know how to multiply times multiples of 10. Nine times eight gives me 72. So I annex that zero because I'm multiplying nine times 80 and I'm going to get an estimate of 720. All right, this one right here, I'm going to actually round 54 hundredths. Hmm, I am thinking I'm going to leave it 50 hundredths, round it to the nearest tenth and I'm going to multiply it times 24. Now with some number sense, you might be able to think through this one. 54 is half of one. So half, its value is going to be half of 24 when I multiply 24 times 50 hundredths or by five tenths. So my estimate would be 12. See if that one right there makes sense. All right. This one right here, number seven, I'm going to round this to the nearest whole number, which would be 33. And I'm going to actually be able to do some mental math and still multiply it times 200. 33 two times, all you got to do is double it. So we get 66. We annex these two zeros. So we get an estimate of 6,600. All right. Number eight, I'm going to treat a whole lot like number um well, no, I'm not. I'm going to round this one to the nearest whole number. One, I'm going to leave this 51 and just get an estimate of 51. All right. Those are not, if you work these out, these are not necessarily the only way you could estimate. Okay. You could use different rounding techniques. You could use different sets of compatible numbers. All right. But your answer should be in the ballpark of what I have for estimates. All right, let's take a look at 9 through 16. All right, I'm looking at 12 hundredths. I'm going to round that to 10 hundredths. 
and I know how to multiply a whole number times ten hundredths or one tenth if we took that zero off. What we're going to do is we're going to move the decimal one pla two places to the left. All right. Well, in order to move that decimal two places to the left, we need to put a decimal in the number. All right. And actually, we're going to make this one tenth. We're only going to have to move it one place to the left. Sorry. All right. If I move that decimal one place to the left, then I get 10 and 5 tenths. OK, so that would be one way to do this. All right, estimating number 10, I would probably make this whole number 50 and leave this four. I'm just using some rounding. All right, rounding to the front digit. I know that 54 times is 200. You also know you could do five times four is 20 and then annex that zero. This one right here, I'm going to round 99 to 100. And I know that 100 times 82, I'm just going to be 82 with two zeros annexed to it. So I get 8,200. Number 12, I'm going to leave the first factor 37. And I'm actually going to round 93 hundredths up to one whole and get a quick estimate of 37. All right, number 13, I am going to use some compatible numbers. I'm going to use one and five tenths or one and 50 hundredths four times. And let me tell you, I'm thinking of this as money. I know that a dollar fifty four times is going to give me six dollars. So I know one and five tenths or one and 50 hundredths four times will give me six. All right, one and five tenths and one and five tenths give me three. And then another one and five tenths and one and five tenths give me three. So that's a total of six, just doing some mental math. All right, our next one, I'm going to use whole numbers for this decimal. So I'm going to round it to three. All right, I am actually going to use a compatible number of 150. I'm pretty good with counting by 15s. So if I know that three times 15 is 45, then I know three times 150 would be 450. All right, this one right here, I'm going to treat a whole like, lot like we did number six. I'm going to leave this whole number 12. I'm going to use the compatible number 50 hundredths. All right, 50 hundredths is half, and half of 12 is going to be six. All right, and the last one we're going to look at is I'm going to round 904 thousandths to one whole. And I'm going to keep 75 and I get an estimate of 75. All right. So we're looking at either rounding or compatible numbers or a little bit of combination of the two different strategies to be able to get a quick estimate when we are multiplying decimals times decimals or decimals times whole numbers. All right. So you have book work that you can do, or if you prefer those practice buddies that I have um, been posting in our Google Classroom, you have a practice buddy online exercise for lesson four two. Again, the benefit of doing the practice buddy is that if you get stuck while you're working through one of your homework problems, you can click and get help and the computer will give you some tips and help get you through the problem. All right, boys and girls, um, have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.